Matthew 5, 38 through 48. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor, neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your own, if you greet only your doing, excuse me, if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Did you all hear that scripture? Did you hear it? Okay. So, who's ready for perfect? <laughs> I'm looking for recruits. Who's ready for perfect? Yeah. <laughs> That's if there's ever if there's ever ever a set of scriptures that prove to us that because the people that wrote those books that are now in the Bible were so different from us and they were storytellers rather than what we think we are, you know, fact mongers. That's proof that we can't just take it literally. Be perfect. I believe strongly that the idea of perfection is just a human idea that we made up so we could claim that we're like God. Perfect. What's perfect? So if we think that we have got to go out and be perfect, like God is perfect, the truth is what? We may as well give up before we start. So how are we going to make sense out of this scripture? How are we? You know the thing about you've heard an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? Okay, if you were a person alive during the time of Jesus. You would have already known where the eye for an eye and a tooth from a tooth came from. Where does it come from? You know? Yeah. It was a big breakthrough in law at that time. The Code of Hammurabi had been instituted and was being followed because before that, if you insulted some, if somebody insulted you were a member of your family, it was okay to go kill them. You know, in, an insult equals death. If you were mad enough at a person after they hit you in a bar fight, it was okay to kill them. At least Hammurabi came up with the idea, look it, if somebody does to you and you lose one of your eyes, okay, you can have one of their eyes, but no more. Get it? And a tooth, uh, pull a tooth. Nothing after that. So see, that was a real big breakthrough, and people were telling each other, wow, we're a much more civilized society than we used to be. And they were. They were. So when they heard that used, okay, this is a big step forward, and Jesus says what? No, no, no. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You've heard it said, you shall love your neighbor uh -huh, and hate your enemy. He said, love your enemy. Oh, my goodness. Take care of them. If somebody sues you for your coat, what are you supposed to do? 
No, you fight it in court. That's what you should do. I mean, that's what people did back then. He said, nah, don't. Don't go to the courts and fight with each other. Give them your coat and then give them a cloak on top of it. <laughs> I, I always think in parentheses, maybe they'll go away. But then the, the, the really neat thing is you can, you can have a lot of fun with this. If somebody tries to make you go a mile, go two miles instead. Think about that. If you go the mile and you go back to where you started, that's two miles. So see, what, what, what is this trying to get, get across to us? It can't be literally what it says. I'm going to walk four miles instead of two. Is that what it means? Or I, I don't know. And neither does anybody else. The point of all this is, if you are my followers, Christ is saying, you got to go beyond what's easy. you got to go beyond what becomes kind of normal, what becomes socially acceptable. you got to go beyond just making somebody else satisfied with you. That's the point of the scripture. Now, how many of you have ever thought that you were going to go lose weight because you started going to the gym and worked out. Have any of you ever tried that? Yeah, okay, some people have. Come on, more of you have tried that. Or how about if you just walk, start walking every day and you're going to lose weight? How many of you lost some weight for a while and then it stopped? Yeah, you know why that is? It's our body's fault. Let me tell you... If you go to a gym and you, you, you get a, a workout regimen going, you go from this, you know, lift this weight and this weight to this weight, then you go on the treadmill and everything like that, and it's all in a nice order. You know what to do every day. You know, after you've done that for about three months, if you keep doing it the same way, nothing else will happen. However, if all you do is turn it around backward and do what you used to do last first, you see what I mean? suddenly you'll start getting some benefit from it. The trouble is, three months later, that won't work either. You see, we kind of get into a new thing, and it doesn't take long for us as human beings for that new thing to become ordinary, that new thing to become habit. What was new is now just kind of second nature. Does that make some sense? It does. So... Jesus is kind of pointing out here, you know, if you love your neighbor, big deal. Jesus is saying, if all you do is greet your brothers and your sisters, and he meant in Christ, if all you do is greet your brothers and sisters in Christ, hey, the Gentiles do that. <laughs> Gentiles were bad people back then, okay? In other words, we were bad people back then. But anyway, seriously, that's a big deal. Now, churches... And this is a church, remember? Okay. Churches have gotten into that rut so much, it's just sad. What rut am I speaking of? Well, like being with each other, yeah. Being among yeah, being among yeah, friends and else. loving each other. I mean, look what Bill said. Ask his doctors, they don't know how he got better. They really don't. We just, some of us know, and he was too stubborn to, <laughs> to die. But, but seriously, there's really something here. I mean, loving each other. I'm, I hate to tell you this, but it's really hard if you're thrown into a group or you become part of a group that you didn't necessarily choose every person in the group. It's called a family. <laughs> you know, you're born into a family. You haven't got any choice about who your mother and father and your sisters and brothers are, do you? And look how that works. All living under the same roof together. It's the same is true in a church. Because you don't know all these people when you come here the first time or the second time or right now if you've been here for 40 years. You don't know everybody as well as some other people, do you? And so we found some way, haven't we, to love and support one another. And we found some way to work together on Thursday nights and make a meal available to, to whoever wants to come and needs a meal. Wow, that's, that's a lot of work. 
And some of us have been transformed, literally, by actually going and tutoring kids. Haven't we, <laughs> Jackie? Because, again, I'm, I'm the living example of that. I'm tutoring kids, and they don't hate me. And, and actually, they're doing pretty well, really. So there's all kinds of great things that happen, but we get into the rut of only getting good at what we've always been doing. The New Beginnings program that we went through, it really has transformed the life of this congregation. I mean, face it, you're, you're mission-oriented now. That's what, that's what we're all about, isn't it? And, and worship has gotten better because of that. We have something to share every week when we come together about what we did last week and things like that. But there's another church in Grand Rapids of our denomination. It's been around, oh, at least as long as this church and maybe a little bit longer that's really, really having a hard time. The average age of their uh, Sunday attendees is, a, believe it or not, it's over 70. That means almost everybody that's there is older than I am. And that's just normal now. They, they're, they have enough money to keep going for a while, but all they keep trying to do is try to do what they've been doing for the last 50 years and do it better. So they're looking to hire the same kind of staff they've had for the last 50 years. They're looking to do the same kind of children's programming and youth programming and outreach. The same thing they've been doing, just all we gotta do is find somebody to lead us and do it better and everything will change, okay? You know what Einstein said about that? You do. But it's not working. Surprise, it's not working. They just called an interim pastor that told them it's not working. <laughs> told them about three years from now, we'll, we'll get to have our, have our funeral. Hmm. Guess what they're st still trying to do? Just trying to do things better, find the right person to do the things we've always done. It was a good place to be, that church, for a long, long time. A lot of people were active in the community and in the neighborhood. And they would cite their church kind of impelled them to do it. But the times kept changing. Their neighborhood has changed drastically from what it used to be. And they're trying to pretend they're still a family church when there aren't any families there anymore. Is any of this making sense? They were really good. They were really good. They were really good at loving their neighbors because they were each other's neighbors. When they walked out of the church, they didn't go more than two or three blocks for all those years. And now that everything has changed, they haven't got a concept of how love has got to be bigger than the ordinary, of how mission has to go beyond that which is simple, how the children of today's world are growing up in a very different world than the ones that us older people grew up in. Very different. Meaner, faster moving. Individuality has come to the point of ruling the world. I mean, it's, it's a tough world. And we, want, we think they're going to sit in some traditional old Sunday school class and have some old guy make him memorize Bible verses? Uh-uh. Ain't going to work. But it hasn't occurred to them, like the scripture says, it's got to keep occurring to us, that we are the kind of people that always are looking how to go the extra mile. By the way, that's where that old saying, you know, going the extra mile, that's where it comes from. That scripture lesson. We are supposed to be those kind of people that now that we've got the Thursday meal down, and we got it down pretty good. We have to have a few more people volunteering and stuff, but it's a really good meal. It's happening every Thursday, and it looks like it's going to keep happening every Thursday. Yeah, we haven't got a clue who isn't coming. We don't know about people who would love to come but aren't able to get here. 
We don't have a clue about people that can't read the flyers we put out there in the community because they're illiterate. Yes, there are a lot of people like that. We don't have a clue, do we? Because it's taken all of our strength and, 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 and money and everything like that to get this going and to now have it going well. There has to be another step. And I'm only using that as an example. Because everything that's good, and that is good, everything that is good in the church is never quite good enough in the eyes of Christ. To come and follow Christ means to go and do amazing things. Now, I don't feel like I can do very many amazing things. I really don't. I don't even try anymore. I used to go out and try to catch fish. <laughs> For me, that was an amazing thing if I caught one. But seriously, I, I don't. But you know what? It's true. I will go with all of you and try to do some amazing things. Because I kind of sensed that if we all got together and did it, we could. How many of us could go and talk to people at the Chamber of Commerce, talk to people oh, at, at, that are plumbers in town and stuff like that? Because see, they're the ones that have contact with absolutely everybody in Lowell. From time to time, they do. We don't. They might have some ideas about where we ought to go and act like, you know, the typical social worker, you know, who goes out and tries to make contact with people, find out what their needs are and everything like that. There's not one person like that in all of Lowell. I, I couldn't believe it when I found that out. There's not. Now, Fromm has social workers, but basically they work with people that come in to, to see them. So. How, uh, is, that, is that the next step? Is that being extravagant in our love? Is that what isn't easy? I don't know. But I did come up with that as an example of what I think this scripture is trying to tell us. We always need to be careful that we don't get used to everything, too used to it, so it, that which was hard becomes easy. It may well be, you see, that love is never allowed to be easy. Wonderful is not the same as easy. Life-giving is not the same as easy. Justice, badly needed in our society, is never going to be easy. Take one step up and pretty soon you get knocked back too. Nothing's easy. And if we let ourselves get trapped into thinking that what Christ wants us to do is get good at something and be happy that we're good at it and start enjoying where we've come, what a great danger that will be. Because we are called to always live and work, and love, and witness to our faith to live beyond the easy. The Spirit will keep prodding us. Others will keep prodding us. New persons that come in to our missions will keep prodding us. But we need to make sure that we're the kind of people that understand that we can't just talk about that Holy Spirit thing. Because if that Holy Spirit thing is a part of our lives, nothing, <laughs> nothing ever will only be easy. Those with ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Amen.